Good morning, dear church. It is so good to bring greetings and a sermon to you this morning. My family is on COVID watch right now, and we wanted to keep you extra safe. So I hope and pray that you all continue to stay safe as well. I want to extend a giant thank you to all those who have stepped up this morning to bring worship to you. In my absence, uh, we at University City United Church are blessed with so many people with so many gifts and talents and people who are willing to share them. So thank you to everyone involved in worship this morning. So with that said, I am going to invite us into this time of reflection. Having heard the scripture this morning, I don't know about you, but I sometimes think that either A, all of these amazing Bible stories are perhaps made up, or B, things just don't work like this anymore. I mean, really, this guy, Saul, is persecuting followers of Jesus left and right, and then bam, the risen Christ appears. He fasts for a couple days, he can't see, and then this guy Ananias appears and scales fall off of his eyes and he changes his mind? That's quite a story. Or is it? Now, lest we think that some 2,000 years ago is the last time such an amazing turnaround happened, consider the story of John Newton. He is a famous slave trader. He is the one who is attributed to writing this song we just sang, Amazing Grace. And we understand that he had sort of a come to Jesus moment at sea, upon which he gave up his boat trading days. He became an ordained minister and eventually an outspoken abolitionist. It didn't happen over the span of a couple of days, but radical transformation was had in his life. Okay, so, so maybe God did that then, but, but not now, right? Surely not these days. Take this story told by Auburn Sandstrom, a visiting lecturer at the University of Akron, who told this story first on November 1st, 2015, at the Academy of Music Theater. She says this, the year is 1992, Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'm curled up in a fetal position on a filthy carpet in a cluttered apartment. I'm in horrible withdrawal from a drug that I've been addicted to for several years now. In my hand, I have a little piece of paper. It's dilapidated because I've been folding it and unfolding it to the point it's almost falling apart, but you can still make out the phone number on it. She says, I am in a state of bald terror. If you've ever had an anxiety attack, that's what this felt like. I've been having nonstop anxiety attack for the last five years, and I've never been in a darker, more desperate place than I was that night. My husband was running on the streets trying to get a hold of some of the stuff we needed, and I knew that if he succeeded, he was not going to share. And if I could, I would jump out of my own skin and run screaming into the streets to get what I need. But behind me, lay sleeping in a bedroom, my baby boy. Now, I wasn't going to get mother of the year in 1992. In fact, at that age of 29, I was failing at a lot of things. Auburn continued to talk about her privileged upbringing, meeting an older guy who introduced her to the drug of choice. And she goes on to say, but instead of transformation, you have me going 90 miles an hour down I-94 with a my poet in a car full of alcohol and illegal drugs trying to get myself some relief. I was so desperate in that moment that I became willing to punch numbers into the phone. The phone number was something I, my mother sent me. Now mind you, I had not been speaking to my parents or anybody else for three, four, five years now, but she managed to get this number to me in the mail. And she said, look, this is a Christian counselor, and since you can't talk to anybody else, maybe sometime you could call this person. So Auburn continues some more, and she says this. I punched in the numbers. I heard the phone pick up. I heard a man say, hello. And I said, hi, I got this number from my mother. Uh, do you think maybe you could talk to me? I heard him shuffling around in the bed, you know. You could tell he was pulling up some sheets around himself and sitting up, and I heard a little radio in the background that he snapped off as he became very present. He said, yes, 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 what's going on? I hadn't told anybody 
including myself, the truth for a long, long time. And I told him I wasn't feeling so good and that I was scared and things had gotten pretty bad in my marriage. And before long, I started telling him other truths, like I might have a drug problem. Auburn continues with some more truth telling and she goes on to say, I started telling those truths and this man didn't judge me. He just sat with me and was present and listened and had such kindness and such gentleness. Tell me more. Oh, that must hurt. Oh, and do you know, I'd made that call at two in the morning and he stayed up with me the whole night, just talking, just listening, just being there until the sun rose. And by then I was feeling calm, she said. The raw panic had passed and I was feeling okay. I was feeling like I can splash some water in my face today. I can probably do this today. I wouldn't have cared if this guy was the Hare Krishna or a Buddhist. It didn't matter to me what his faith was. And I was so thankful to him. And so I said, hey, you know, I am really appreciative and you of what you've done for me tonight. Aren't you supposed to be like telling me to read some Bible verses or something? Because that'd be cool, you know, I'll do it. It's all right. <laughs> he laughed and said, well, I'm glad this was helpful for you. And we talked a little more and I brought it up again and I said, no, really, you're really very good at this. I mean, you've seriously done a big thing for me. How long have you been a Christian counselor? I asked. There was a long pause and I heard him shuffling. Auburn, please don't hang up, he says. I've been trying to bring this up. What? I ask. He responds, you won't hang up? No, I said. I'm so afraid to tell you this, but... The number you called? He paused. You got the wrong number. Well, I didn't hang up on him. And we did talk a little longer. And I would never get his name and never call him back. But that day, I felt this kind of joy like I was shining. I think I've heard them call it the peace that passes understanding. I had gotten to see that there was completely random love in this universe, she said. That it could be unconditional and that some of it was for me. She continued, and I can tell you that, or I can't tell you that I got my life totally together that day, but it became possible to get some help and to get the hell out. And it also became possible as a teetotaling, semi-sane, single parent, raising up that precious baby boy into a magnificent young scholar and athlete who graduated from Princeton in 2013 with honors. This is what I know, she said. In the deepest, blackest nights of despair, if you can get just one pinhole of light, all the grace rushes in. Friends, maybe, just maybe, the risen Christ continues to move and bring about radical change in people, not just 2,000 years ago, not just in the 1800s, but today, now. We all know someone, maybe not a Paul story or even an Auburn story, but a story of someone who was maybe headed down the wrong path and turned it around, or the story of someone who has been struggling and found a way. When I remember stories such as these, I am reminded that while things may not happen now as they are told in our Bible, I have no doubt that God is still at work in our world. God is still working to bring transformation, that hope abounds, that possibilities emerge, that new life is indeed lived. As Easter people, we cannot lose sight of this. We have to continue to be on the lookout for amazing stories of change in our Bible stories, in our newspaper, in our neighborhoods, in our church, my friends, in our families, and yes, even in us. Because when we notice our God at work, we can celebrate it and we can share that love more freely. And maybe, just maybe, the more we see it, the more we'll notice it, that God is indeed at work, 
changing lives in us and in others. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.